Alright, we're getting started today with the Tau Riptide. So I've done a test panel just to make sure that I've got my color scheme knocked in and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, with larger models like this, Riptides, Knights, uh, I like to break down the model into base components. I have pins in all the pieces so that if I airbrush something I can set it down and I'm not worried about the paint getting somewhere. Also it's like the whole object needs to be painted so it's not like a space marine where you put it on a base and you don't have to worry about the underside of the base getting painted. Um, so I'm going to pause, remount the camera and then show you guys the first step of getting this nice kind of indigo purpley blue locked in on your riptides. All right, first step, take royal purple game color or any other kind of bluish purple, dark purple. We're going to airbrush that on the base coat for all our panels. Unfortunately, for some of the parts, that means that I'm going to have to go in and re-black some areas because the inner skeleton of the Riptide is a black with like a little bit of fade and then an edge highlight. But this is 50-50 thinner and our royal purple just a nice opaque base coat. Make sure with these sort of parts you get the edges too, because those will be seen. And again, when you're airbrushing, don't worry about slathering it on. You're already saving time. Take your time. Don't get it too wet, because it'll run, it'll spider on you, and it'll create a texture on the model that you won't like. All right, now that you got your purple on, we're going to take some somber gray, again, mixed 50-50 with thinner, and we're going to start building up our highlights. Somber gray is a pretty dark gray, but it's still lighter than this purple, so it give you some control on highlight placement. Going up the top center of this leg plate, and then hitting the edges here pretty solid on the front part of the edge and then kind of bleed it back along the edge. Use the bottom part of the cone of the spray that comes out to hit these edges and to bleed them in. Like that. All the way up there. It needs a little bit of interest there so it's kind of a dead spot. Like that. So you get that kind of dynamic shift of color with the towel. He's a uh, famous for and then here you can see that same shift going on now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the pieces and I'll come back once we finish the glacier blue and show you highlight placement and color placement as I mentioned previously glacier blue is gonna be our next highlight so 50 50 in the airbrush blowing out a little bit of that older color you see on the uh, paper towel there it's still you know, pretty dense color. And just working in our highlights a little bit more. And of course, I'm going to come back and show you guys. So if you're watching this and getting ready to follow this color scheme, I'll make sure you know where to place highlights, or at least where I place highlights. And you should always feel free to adapt those sort of things to your liking. Again, bleeding out on that edge a little bit. And you see the geometry masks itself. So you can get some pretty cool sharp edges. And then these, like, oversprays and stuff, they're fine. They, they add more uh, dynamic look to the model by having a light color in a dark space. Especially with Tau. Tau is just one of those armies that you can do go nuts with, with where the highlights come from. Uh, because they get that weird sort of ceramic plate armor. All right, we're back. It doesn't take much of that glacial blue. I didn't even use half a cup of, uh, of color. So just showing you how I place my highlights toward the bottom of a lot of objects. Center, and then maybe rolling it forward to the forward area. Um, shoulders, where you have those breaks. Um, grab this. Um, you know, catching those edges so it, it flows over the object. Um, the legs here uh, didn't really have to paint the legs because those are going to be um, black. But the toes, uh, just the tops of the toes rolling across. Um, again, really nice break on the middle guard there. And then lots of nice breaks 
Um, and when I say break, I mean those hard edges that really you can catch and then have a shadow right next to a bright point. Uh, let me pause real quick. Alright, these big side panels going for like a top and bottom, keeping them dark in the center and then bleeding light off the back edges. In here with these smaller objects, kind of hitting the side but letting it give you that, that sharp edge there and then toward the tail ends of the, uh, the little antenna that stick off of these guys. So there's that one. The head focusing on the antenna again and then toward the front of the face and then trying to bleed light down on the bottom so you get a break right here. And the shield going toward the outside edges of the fins and then real bright there and then up at the top so you get a little pop of color. The <clears throat> torso uh, down the bottom of these big power engines or whatever they are. Uh, at the bottom again here using again the airbrush to break over the edge so coming in from this direction to get that nice shadow in the front so it's nice and dynamic from the front. Uh, same in the back, bleeding it down this edge, leaving it dark here, down the bottom, and then in the center, another break right there on the backs of these. Leaving alone the bottom because that should be in shadow for the most part. The arm that holds the shield using a cylindrical highlight for these, so down each side. You could also go to the bottom if you want, but I wanted this to be a little bit more dynamic. The bottom of the uh, the hand or the forearm on each side, then at the fronts there, and then the bottom again, kind of dark, got a break in that side, a break right there. It hits those two sharp edges. I think that's it. The next step is going to be taking Celestium Blue as our contrast. So you, you can see if I put these leg plates together that naturalize the color a little bit, saturates it back because I want that, that nice saturation in our color and then shifts a little bit of that purple more into the kind of dark purpley blue. So I'm gonna get that loaded up in the airbrush and show you how I blend all this back in. So when I load up a contrast paint here, you can just kind of dump it or you can use a pipette. I'm just taking my brush and just squeegeeing it off into the airbrush here because I'm gonna thin it down. So using that, that thinner will help you get some of the, the contrast off the side and you don't need a whole lot of this. You're blending, you're not coating. So just about half as much thinner. And that'll also give you a lot of control. All right, you can see in my airbrush how that contrast just kind of bled off the sides there. And real light. And it'll tint it right back in. You wanna maintain your highlights, so don't blow them out. And then get those mid-tones and shadows real good. See, I'm going real, real light with it. Small little sprays and it shifts it immediately. The contrasts are pretty strong, pigment-wise. So be careful not to blow out those under colors too much. You won't need a whole lot, like this whole cup, like just the bottom of the airbrush there. Should do just about every piece we got. All right, now we need to go in and knock in some panel lines. So take our nun oil, shake it up, get you a liner, like one of these big, long, thin, bristled brushes. That'll help you drop that wash down in there. And then just take your object. Don't worry about overages too much because we're gonna be adding some battle damage. Get it in there. If you get it, uh, if it gets wet, you go in and just drop your, your wash in there and the wash will flow on its own. And then you can just take your thumb and kind of wipe your overages away like that. So you're going to do that on a lot of these pieces. Alright, once your wash is dry, and it should be dry because you're going through a lot of steps, we're going to take some of this uh, green gray and add those uh, very uh, iconic how markings where some of their panels have that accent color using green gray because it plays well with the purple blue that we have and a little bit of that color theory even something that is 
so benign as to be a, a gray paint with just a tint of green works better when you add that complementary color to it make sure we go ahead and get our edges here I'm gonna do a few stripes too and then we're gonna do one layer of highlight on these so that it's not just a flat color on the model but you can tell that that greenish gray does play really nice with the the blue purple that we have I'll do a stripe over here on this side let's do the bottom side you know a towel it's you can kind of mix it up with uh, wet areas but if you're if you're looking for a guide or if you're looking for suggestions you can always go on line and just google a riptide find one that has a marking pattern that you kind of like or you know maybe give you some ideas on where to put things that you might have not thought of before here i've painted probably over a dozen of these things over the years so pretty comfortable with where to put my markings all right once you have that in and dry we're going to add a little bit of white just plain white to our green gray not a whole lot just enough to bring it up a step and you'll notice when you put it on there it's gonna go on a lot brighter and then you'll when it dries it'll calm down a little bit and you can blend it feather it here we're gonna do down toward the bottom edges just to make it interesting toward the outside there you can see up here when it dries like you, see, you can see the layer but it's it's one of those things when you look at it from far away it's not going to be super noticeable as far as the layers go all right once you get those highlights in time for our black and brown so this is a red brown you can use like a terracotta or a mahogany i'm you know, using black and brown again color theory we don't want to just use a black we want to use something that plays with the other colors that we're using well so a warm brown is going to interact with our paint really nicely and i'm going in not edge highlighting this is edge damage so just kind of stippling in you can do this with a sponge if you want a faster method we're painting a higher tabletop so I'm making sure to do this by hand so I can control it put it where I want it not worry about uh, bopping it on there too hard and having too much damage in a spot I want it to be pretty even and continuous around the model and give it that nice like the edges have been scratched up and hit all right we got another sort of tedious step where we're edge highlighting all of this battle damage we're using our somber gray same thing we put through the airbrush and for those of you who hate edge highlighting or just hate the consistency that you get this is almost an easier way to do it because it's battle damage you still got to hit the straight path that don't have battle damage right but at least in this way you're saving yourself some headache with being able to be a little touch and go with it because the inconsistency should exist with this step it's just going to take time these little outlines really should make that battle damage kind of pop makes it feel like the paint's peeling on the on the panels all right, once you get all the somber gray on there, it's time to add a little punch of highlight. So you can see here there are some slightly brighter areas in our chipping. So we're taking our other airbrush highlight color, the Glacier Blue. And not tracing over everything, but picking some of the higher points where you think the battle damage should look deeper or more intense. Definitely some of these like corners where you still have a full corner and going real soft and light. We don't want to overdo this step too much. Just here and there. You can see me kind of hunting around with my brush for places that I want to put it. I 
It adds it a little more dynamic. It reinforces the fact that there's battle damage there. So you can see it from farther away. But I'm going to go through and add that on all the panels. All right, after you get all those little spot highlights in for your battle damage, we need to do the same thing with the gray. So we go back to our green gray. What is this? Gray green. And we're going to add some white, a lot more white than last time for the highlight. You can see here the step up on the palette. And we're going to do the edge highlights just like we did with the blue. Round our battle damage. I'm trying to remember, yeah, we did a, like a few spot highlights of the pure white with that. Afterwards. Getting it nice and weathered up. I'll show you here with just the whites, this little two-step edge highlight process. It's got almost the same value as that gray-blue, just a little bit punchier, so it'll be even more sparing with that color. Alright, skipping ahead a little bit, I've uh, done almost completed one leg here. Um, the edge highlights on the black so these black areas I've just blocked them in right so any anything that you want to be black these toes can be your normal blue if you want you can do the the black you can do the whole thing blue if you want um, I just like the black because it kind of breaks up and it goes with the um, the model kind of a, a darker scheme for the towel not as bright but you know, we got some OSL coming up. That's going to brighten up our scheme. My edge highlights are the gray green. So that gray green again coming in and giving us some slight contrast or complements. contrast coming in the edge highlights and we are going to highlight this with the airbrush so the normal path will be uh, gray green edge highlight come in mix a little bit of white in there so you can get some and these are last night's paints you can tell I did a lot of work last night I'm going to be here till midnight this, this model's got to go out sometime tomorrow and then pop those edge highlights a little bit with a, a little bit brighter version and then you can see every little edge edge highlight like even down in here where they get kinda it's square and blocked off edge highlight when I have a round area I do kind of a, a cylindrical edge highlight don't go crazy you don't have to be like you know super thin if you don't want if you have that ability go for it but it's gonna take a long time so if you have any little overages or little thick edge highlights it's okay especially since we're weathering this so we're gonna go back with some weathering powder and put it in and it'll look in place you know like that area got beat up a little bit um, so uh, after that we take and I'll, I'll um, do this on video next time but we take the gray green through the airbrush and we airbrush so that's where you're seeing these little lighter fades on the leg, all right? We want that plain black to come up just a little bit more so that we do have some of that uh, difference going on in our planes uh, for for highlighting and stuff. So cool, I'm gonna, uh, next time you see this thing, it's gonna be a lot more done. All right, time to airbrush some of the gray green. You want to thin that down two to one. Only need a very tiny bit for this section and I'm just hitting this leg since this one's already been done. So you can see you've got a lot of weathering, patterning, everything starting to kind of come together. Still a few other steps we need to do. And when I'm doing these steps, 
I'm going to go through and do them all on the other bits, but I won't leave out any steps that I did, you know, as far as airbrushing, OSL, any of the important information, and you will get that kind of overall at the end to see everything that's been done. In the middle of the foot here, a few high points here, just to, again, we're breaking up the, the flatness of the, of the black. You can hit from the underside if you want. It is going to tone down your edge highlights, but that's okay. Bottom of the ball down this side. You can see I had like a little scratch there with the... My brush did a little wayward brush stroke, so I just turned it to a scratch. Alright, our next step is to take Model Air Steel, an amazing metallic for brush painting. And we're going to paint all these little hinge areas. So going in and just adding a nice bright metallic kick. So up here, this guy, this guy, this one. You could even paint this hinge down here if you wanted. I think I'm going to save gold for these down here just to balance out our gold. And then remember you have to get the inside portions too. So here, here, and then again, you can do this one if you would like, because you can count it as a hinge. Um, so just going to do a base coat of that on there. All right, time for some Nun Oil. I've already started applying. Um, I don't think I have to show you guys what a Nun Oil bottle looks like. It's like if you're painting miniatures. I don't want to assume, though. But nun Oil. GW Wash. Comes in these little pots. You spill them all over your station all the time. So we're just washing those little silver areas that we got here, making sure we kind of blend out some hard lines where they interact. They get a little bit wobbly because the, the seam isn't like a hard seam or anything. And then I have one other thing to show you, so I'll finish the inside of the leg. You might do two coats of the Nun Oil on here depending on how dark you want the shading to go. I haven't shaded over here yet, but I've got it up in there drying. The new nun oil is kind of weak. Uh, torso, so moving up the body. These are the areas that I've sort of designated as gray and black. So the little engine uh, exhaust, the ring up here, this guy, that guy. This this little ring in the center, it's okay to go over since we're going to paint it uh, gold once we're done. And then I still have to do the black wash kind of lining and stuff. But we still have to paint some silver areas on this as well. Alright, quick update on the torso. You can see where I went in, added silver, have it down in the recesses here. Some of these little knobs, bits, bobs, just to break up the space a little bit so it's not all one tone. Now we're going to go in and add all that weathering like we've seen on the previous steps. Just showing you, again, you can see the wash down in there still drying and stuff. Um, how I've broken up this object. Alright, for some of these areas, I should have left these missile pods off so I could just airbrush the gray on. Hand painted those, so if you want to leave those separate, you're watching this before you start painting. Uh, I'm, I'm using that same gray that we're doing for the striped elements or the marking elements. Um, going to go ahead and wash with our nun oil. Uh, you can just slather it in in some areas here, like around the missiles and that, because we're going to go in and uh, weather it up and battle damage it. Uh, the missiles are going to be a different color, so I'm not worried about overages on them. And then hit your lines. And then I'm going to airbrush my highlight on these before I do the weathering. Um, so like I was hand ha highlighting with some of the smaller areas, like the stripes that were in the blue, but this is large enough where I can get in with the airbrush. If you want to hand highlight because you don't trust yourself with the airbrush, go for it. That will also work. But we are going to do the edging as well as the, the brown weathering on these. I'm going to go ahead and drop a wash around the ring on these. These are going to be painted silver as well as the ones on the back. 
All right, I've mixed up two drops of white, two drops of our gray green for all you engineers out there that like those precise measurements. You could just use pure white if you want and just let it obscure itself. I'm highlighting kind of in an L shape here using the bottom edge of my cone. See that? Get that nice sort of ceramite uh, fade. Is it ceramite? Do towel have ceramite too? Probably not. Maybe it's just a shittier ceramite since their armor saves aren't as good as Space Marine. It's fading it in there. Wait till your wash is dry, you're gonna blow it out of the cracks. I actually went in and added the weathering and stuff while I was waiting. Also, since you guys already know how to do that, you're experts at it. Probably get away with one drop and one drop. Got too much paint in the airbrush. It's still like pretty much full. Highlight the top of this area here. See how it takes away that kind of excess of uh, wash? No, you don't. You can only see my palette. Same. See the top edge here. Bottom edge there. So you get some of that dynamic shift. And then we're just going to weather everything and paint some silver, and I'll show you this one when it's done. Alright, base, ooh, wobbly. Base color for our accent is turquoise. So we're going to have the light turquoise from the model color line. So our little missiles here, not weathered for the missiles. I assume he went back and reloaded, got some fresh ammunition at some point. So he's got some nice new missiles. You can see down in a couple spots there, might have to re-add some wash. We're just going to highlight with some little crescents across the top. It's like a little swoosh. Swoosh. Try and filter out the brush strokes a little bit, just so you get a little bit of brightness at the front of these guys. Alrighty. Guess you guys heard that. Just gonna go use the restroom. Here late on a Tuesday night. So yeah, like that accent color it really ties in kind of the the green and blue going because teal is a byproduct of green and blue. So now the green gray is accented while the blue is accented. Hope that makes sense. All right, our next accent, a uh, warm gold. So we're using liquid gold, rich gold on the orbs and that. So main reason is this big towel symbol here. I want to finish this object. Then I'm going to go back and hit that, that, and then these orbs on the feet. And then we'll highlight them with some silver. So I'm going to open this up. Main reason to use liquid gold is because normal acrylic golds suck ass and this goes on super opaque, super easy. You just need to clean it up with isopropyl alcohol and it makes painting gold so much easier than using normal acrylic gold, even the Vallejos and stuff. It's like they just don't coat over dark stuff so this stuff, and look at it, it's like shiny. Shiny, shiny. All right, what do you highlight gold with? Not lighter gold, silver. Silver is the highlight to gold. So we're going here. See, it looks natural. It just looks like bright gold because it's on top of gold, and because light reflects white. Like when you do non-metallic metal, what do you what do you use? Use white. You don't keep using red and red and red and red and more red. Because it doesn't make sense. Gotta use the bright. The bright color. Look at that. That's how it works. It's easy. This texture, go away a little bit. Let me varnish. I do even matte varnish over my metallics. It's fine. For some people it's like, takes the shine out. Eh, maybe a little bit. Who cares? It's still, it's still going to be. I mean, it's already really shiny. Like, it's not going to knock it down that much. I'll go ahead and weather up this piece. 
the arm. See, look, I already got a silver highlight there. Look at that, it just makes it look more shiny. Um, <clears throat> this guy's dry. Got my golds on this guy. And he's starting to come together. <laughs> a few more pieces to go. Um, I wish this guy just had arms and not a giant backpack. Giant bisected backpack. But I'll weather this up, get back to you so you can see the results on the shield, and then see the results of the highlights on this. I'm gonna drop a Reichland flesh shade. I guess I can show you that real quick. Let me find it. Reichland flesh shade, the perfect shade for gold. Because gold is warm. And this is a warm, not neutral, like Earthshade or Sepia. This one is warm. See? It's a lot better. I'm just dropping it in the cracks here. You could actually build this up if you wanted, but I'm just going to put it in here. We're going to do some other little weathering things with the airbrush. I might hit this with some... I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Alright, breaking down these objects to show you what color is what on them. These little sensor bulbs are going to be the same thing as the missile front, or turquoise color. <clears throat> uh, I still need to put the airbrush on with the gray, just now seeing that while showing you guys. I guess this is kind of like a carbon copy, but it's got the little uh, multi-tracker up there. The little gold bips with the highlights. No steps that I haven't covered done to any of these. And then the, the gun, which is almost like an entire torso in and of itself. <clears throat> with all the little details. And the wrist is sore. I mean, pumping this guy out. So I'm going to glue those on. And then we're going to start on the base. The base... I want something that dries like fairly quick. We're going to use the Tamiya soil effect because we are going to do the jungle base on this guy. So I'm going to get him feet down on the base, these extra parts glued on, the soil effect on, and then finish up his head uh, while that stuff is drying. And then we'll come back and do some effects on the gun. All right. To my stuff. Fun fact, if you shake it, it'll make like little snowballs of the stuff in there. Ugh. This is, uh, it's easier to spread if you add water to it. Um, like, see how it's, it doesn't want to stick. If you add water, it, uh, I'll just dip it in my water cup with this little, uh, thing. And it won't stick to the tool as much. I'm going to spread this all around, make some nice muddy ground to, glue grass too. It's got to get way more. There we go. More water, the better. It, it turns it more into paint. Uh, this might be because it's like a little bit of older bottle so it like traps air too. And so some of the moisture is, is dried. But this is a, a good nice base mud for jungle floor that we're going to do. I'm going to have to turn off the camera while well, i got stuff on my tool. All right, base is dry, took an hour. Black and brown, same thing we did our battle damage with is the base coat of color for our base. Gonna airbrush that in, get that nice reddish brown going. As an accent to the model. And this is about all I'm gonna airbrush on camera. So I don't get dust on everything else that's sitting over there. Once that's dry, we're going to take this color, earth, uh, and dry brush it on the base. Actually, kind of a wet brush. See how I'm kind of working it in the palette there? I want a, a heavy coat. Kind of naturalize it back with that red undertone. See what it's doing? Do that. So sometimes, you know, you want you want to get heavier color on the base. You don't want to get you don't want to mess around. Even chunks go flying. Just brush them off. Work that up. Keep in mind your crescent, but we're gonna go in and we're gonna like add shadows to the crescent. So you can do the whole thing if you want. Basing. I hope you have all these tufts. And if you don't, there's websites. Uh, 
I don't even know where to get some of these. Uh, we have so many of these things. So this is kind of a uh, floral element with a mixture of different textures and stuff. And then this is for coverage. And then a few leaves just for ground clutter. We're gonna go heavy with it. And when I glue down um, tufts, I use super glue. Um, you can use white glue. Some people use white glue. I don't like white glue. I like the CA glue because it sticks down way quicker. Um, here is the base post dry brush. It was still a little bit wet, so I kicked up some areas, but I'm going to just dunk CA glue in there. Get it done, because this thing has to go out in the morning. All right, got turquoise loaded up in the airbrush. It's time to do a little bit of glow. We're much uh, bushier than we were a second ago. Uh, but just one little glow here in the gun. And then we'll highlight it up. My needle's jammed and it's letting out a perfect flow of paint. So I'm using that to my advantage. I don't want anything over over the top with this. I can test if my needle is letting out paint. I'm not even pulling anything back. It's just dribbling out. I'm afraid to kind of pull back the needle because it's letting out the right amount. I might mess something up. Trying to make sure that the object isn't like shadowing itself so I don't get any weird shadows in there. I want to maintain that like inner glow. So you can see kind of on the tops of these objects and maybe on the bottom of them. I need to make sure that those get knocked out. And then we'll hand brush in those little glowy bits. You can see here I did the uh, multi-tracker, drone controller, whatever those things are, and his little eyeball lens. All right, cool. And then I'm gonna pause it. So for this inner glow, I'm just taking a little bit of white and turquoise and hitting these little square spots on the inside here. The base feels good on my hand. It's like a little massage, a little tree massage. What? Don't look at me weird. It's like a koosh ball. That's what it feels like. A little grassy koosh ball. It's late. All right, taking some skin wash from Game Ink. I think it's an old label. Probably some old ink. I need to reset my needle. Hold on. Okay, got it in there. Should be working. There we go. All right, <clears throat> so remember when I talk about complementary colors and stuff. We have all these gray tones that have kind of like gray green. Now we have a nice rich sort of red ink. We're gonna add that slightly. See it just slightly in there. Part of the weathering. It's really gonna pick up on these silvers really nice as well. And I'm only shooting it from the bottom. Right? In the shadows. Get my airbrush to work. Yeah, that's okay. Nice. <laughs> Alright, making sure I'm hitting my silvers. You can hit the golds too with this, because it's like that rich red. Look at that. See that? See that? Look at that. Yeah, it's good. It's good shit. See? See what it does? <clears throat> it's okay if it gets on the model a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna come over here and unclog my airbrush. There we go. See what that red does? That's so good. Plays with the all the other colors that we have put in the model. We got the green in the base, right? Let's 
we still got to play with the base a little bit. We got to add some blue to it in the form of some indigo. Indigo go. So yeah, skin wash. Who'd have thought? You only bought it because you wanted to paint flesh tones, and you know it said skin on it. Now we're just painting gold and blue and gray and all this other sort of crap. And I'm going to finish this up because you've seen the magic moments and the rest of it is just going to be boring. Alright, last touch before we black ring that base. Indigo FW ink through the airbrush. We're going to create some light on the base. We don't want it to be an even tone. We want it to be brighter toward the front. So... Ooh, that's a lot of air pressure. Hold on. Let's turn that down a notch or two. Let's take it down a peg or two. And just come in here and shadow our foliage. If you've watched any previous videos, we'll talk about the crescent where you want the back of the base to be in shadow front of the base to be brighter, to draw attention to the front of the model, to create a viewpoint for it. So now we look at it, see how it's getting darker back there? We want that darker indigo in the, the for, wait, for, no, background, foreground you want brighter. It's up to you what you do with your five ground. Alright, so you can see a little bit darker in the back, brighter in the front. He's coming out of the woods, he's going to shoot your, shoot your tank. Alright, time to put the black ring on. And for those of you who have been watching the channel, now this is the final step to clean up. Make that model look just a little bit better. Hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you learned some stuff. And as always, if you got any questions, please feel free to put those in the comments. Or heck, just, you know, stalk me on Facebook or something. You can shoot me a, a message there. I'm, I'm a normal person. I'm a normal person that just paints miniatures. I like painting miniatures and I like helping people paint miniatures. This is a really big ring, so I'm not going to draw this out. I'm going to finish this off screen, but uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you like the model. Give me some comments. Like some shit. I don't know. Um, happy painting.